Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. According to Channel 10 News late Sunday night, Israel's state prosecutor's tax and finance department has just issued its recommendations for indictments against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over allegations of corruption in case 1,000, if not 2,000 as well. State Attorney Shai Nitzan will now review the department's findings and present his final recommendation to Attorney General Avichai Mandelblit for the final say. Though Mandelblit has already stated he will wait to make any decisions one way or the other until all investigations into Netanyahu are complete and the investigation into case 4000 or the Bezik case has not yet finished. But the head of the state prosecutor's tax and finance department, Liat Beneri, has remained consistent in that she believes there is sufficient evidence of corruption and bribery, alleging that Netanyahu received around a million shekels in gifts in return for favors, as well as engaged in quid pro quo agreements. As for case 4000, in which the prime minister is suspected of having helped Bezik owner Shaul Elovich in return for more favorable coverage in Elovich's news site Walla, the investigation has recently been reopened in light of new evidence. Police have questioned Netanyahu 12 times across cases, though, and he has consistently denied any wrongdoing, saying they'll find nothing because there is nothing. The Justice Ministry has not yet commented on these latest reports. The Culture Loyalty Bill proposed by Culture Minister Miri Regev is being delayed now after Moshe Kahlon, the head of the Kulanu Party, gave free reign to his party members to vote as they please. And the Kulanu Party is a key remaining member of the coalition, which currently holds the government together with a slim 61 to 59 seat majority in the Knesset. As a result, with the success of the culture bill unsure, the vote has been pushed. That being said, criticism over the bill has been sharp leading up to today as well, including full ads, public artist demonstrations, and more, just to highlight artist opposition to a government censure over the arts, especially one with Regev at the helm. Now, on a somewhat related note, the government is now also requesting of the High Court to extend the deadline for amending the ultra-Orthodox conscription law. The High Court of Justice has already provided multiple postponements of the original deadline, however, giving it until December 2nd, just as past September. The current issue over conscription began in September 2017, when an exemption from military service for ultra-Orthodox Jews was deemed unconstitutional by the court. The government was given a year to fix the bill, or else all Haredi Jewish members would have to enlist as their secular counterparts would. This matter too threatens the fragile coalition, however, which relies heavily on its religious parties. Meanwhile, as the government's internal clashes continue, Idris Debi, the president of Chad, arrived yesterday for an almost secret trip. Debi's visit was only revealed at the very last minute, and it makes him the first sitting president of Chad, a Muslim-majority African nation, to come to Israel. But Netanyahu and Debi both hailed the trip as an historic visit, where the two countries who haven't had any diplomatic relations in nearly 50 years can begin a new chapter. In fact, Netanyahu also praised the trip as symbolic of the growing ties Israel has made worldwide. Though security was the main focus of the visit, as indicated both in the comments made by Netanyahu and the Chadian leader during yesterday's press conferences, as well as by Chad government sources speaking to Reuters. This has led opposition leader Tamar Zanberg from Meretz to demand to know if Israel will include an arms sale to the African nation in any recent agreements. Zanberg said that the concern is that Israeli arms will be sold, quote, to persecute political opponents, human rights activists, and journalists, end quote. She then continued to accuse Debbie of being, quote, a despicable person who is responsible for the persecution of LGBT people, arresting journalists, arresting dissidents in the opposition, and establishing a dictatorial regime in his country, end quote, as well as accusing Netanyahu of tarnishing Israel's reputation with these types of relationships. And Israeli arms have indeed found their way into the hands of some of the world's worst human rights abusers, like apartheid South Africa and even more recently to South Sudan. On the other hand, Chad is one of the countries in Africa that has received Western backing as well, including from the United States, in order to fight ISIS and Boko Haram terrorists in West Africa. Israel's security cabinet has officially confirmed yesterday that Aviv Kochavi will now be the 22nd chief of staff in the IDF. Kochavi started out in the paratroopers and is the former head of the military intelligence and the Northern Command, and he'll be replacing the current IDF chief of staff Gadi Eisenkot following a two-week transitionary period. But while Kochavi is indeed an accomplished commander, according to Army Radio, he wasn't actually Netanyahu's preferred choice. It's been reported that Netanyahu shouted at now former Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman, who took advantage of Netanyahu's then-secret visit to Oman to announce that he is nominating Kochavi for the role. The report also alleges that Lieberman knew that Netanyahu preferred Major General Eyal Zamir, who is head of the Southern Command, for the position. Before the Southern Command, Zamir served as Netanyahu's military secretary. Well, both Netanyahu and Lieberman have rejected claims of the alleged argument, but at any rate, Zamir is now apparently slated to be Kochavi's successor in the role. 
Finally, in addition to being a brilliant military mind, Kochavi is also a husband and a father of three daughters, who holds a bachelor's degree in philosophy from the Hebrew University, a master's from Harvard in public administration, and a second master's from John Hopkins University in international relations. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.